The psalmist writes, praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all his angels, praise him all his hosts. We begin with the opening hymn, hymn number 464, the strife is o'er, the battle done. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We kneel for confession. The fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. We should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. Have I been insolent, sullen, and disrespectful to my parents, teachers, employers, or authorities over me? Have I been on good behavior when they are present and mocking them when they are absent? Have I given honor and respect to the pastoral office? 
Have I helped those who carry responsibilities of governing? Do I pray for parents, leaders of the nations, schools, and church? Do I grumble about work given me to do? O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your, your beloved, beloved Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, to be, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as the called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Like newborn infants, long for the spiritual milk, that by it may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted, the Lord is good. Who oh, will give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. His miracles and the judgments he altered. He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good.
let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council, named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thutis rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if the plan, for if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Peter, chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved with various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes through it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him, though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls." This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess the Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day, hymn number 470, O Sons and Daughters of the King.
He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus, the name that was given to him at birth, spoken by the angel of the Lord to Joseph, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And that is what Jesus is all about, the sins of his people. That is what Jesus continues to be about, the sins of his people. For where there is the forgiveness of sins, there is life and salvation. This should teach us something. If Jesus is so concerned about our sins that he would so suffer and die for them, should we not also then be concerned about our sins? Do we ever truly mourn over them? Are we sorry for our sins and that we are sinners? Do you ever hate not being able to do the good that you want to do and know that God wants you to do and commends and commands you to do, trying to do the good but so often falling back into sinful habits and patterns? Are we sorry? For the sins that pin Jesus to the cross. If we have no sorrow for them, how can we hate them? And if we do not hate them and lament our sinfulness, why then would we ever come to God and seek his forgiveness? Do you know that since last Sunday you have broken all of God's commandments? Don't think so? If you do not know that, then there's only one reason why, and that's because you don't seriously examine yourself. And you don't examine yourself because sin, then, is not your concern as much as it is God's concern for you. When this is the case, we have a very different understanding then of why we come to church and what it is that we expect to hear and to receive. We have a un different understanding then of worship. That means we may miss out then on what the true blessings of God are for us in worship, on what that life with God is really about. And then perhaps even heaven itself altogether. Why? We fail to understand our primary need. So know this, that the highest worship of Christ is to seek and to receive from him that which he alone has procured for us, forgiveness. Very simply, that means healing eternally and restoration. So worship is foremost this God suffering for us, dying for us, rising again for us, and then coming to us with the fruit of his cross and salvation work and proclaiming and administering it all to us centered in these words, peace be with you. Meaning, you are now eternally reconciled to God, my child. Sin and death are destroyed in me. So now. Live. Live. We are a sin, sick, and infested people. It is a terminal disease in us that, if left untreated and unmanaged, will realize its eternal fruition. An eternal separation from God in unspeakable torment. And that is what death is. It's what the second death is. Separation. Separation from God in which then there is no return. It is the one disease that no one can overcome except Jesus, who is the sin bearer and slayer. He is the one who holds the keys in the palms of of his hands. Do you not, when experiencing symptoms in your body, telling you that there is something wrong, 
or when then you were diagnosed with a serious and maybe even life-threatening disease, do you not then engage in all kinds of research to know about and to deal with that condition? Do you not seek to obtain for yourself then the medications and the treatments to help mend and to cure your body? Do you not modify then your lifestyle and all the things that you do and, you, and what you eat in order to counter your afflictions? Do you then not manage your health and your well-being, even to the point of being obsessed with it, consumed by it? And do you not know that sin is actually behind all of this? All that affliction that we suffer in the body? And yet it is a far greater enemy that resides in us. It's the only disease that has eternal consequences. How much more then ought we to be concerned over this than all the other? The very thing that comes between us and God, us and heaven, us and all that is good and right and holy and everlastingly blessed. Here again. His name is Jesus. He will save his people from their sins, and he rises again. This is the Lord of life. This is the one who destroys the works of the devil in his death for sin and his resurrection for our eternal life. He holds the keys to both heaven and Hades. He is the Lord of all, and there is no one else like him. And this is the one who died for you, that you may be like him who dies no more. Fulfilled. It is finished. He did it. Sin paid for in full. And death can no longer hold on to him. And now this other side of death to die no more Jesus comes into the midst of his disciples bearing the marks and the result of his salvation work for them, his crucified and his blood letted body now arisen. He is not the same. No closed doors or windows can hinder him. He appears in their midst set free. From space and time, no longer bound by it, but in heavenly glory and splendor. He is all present God. He is the salvation present Jesus. And he says, peace be with you. Your sins are atoned for. You were forgiven. All of it. Everything. First there is fear. And then there is gladness. Like Mary at the tomb, we have seen the Lord. Yes, and with him is salvation. Notice that Jesus came twice, stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. So do you see? Right from the cross and resurrection, Jesus comes to stand in the midst of his people and deliver directly to them the fruit of his cross in his word of peace. And then to reveal himself to them in his wounds from which flowed the water and the blood. And he breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Just as it is, as it is spoken. I will put my spirit within you, and you will live. And the spirit is the one who testifies, because the spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify. The spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree. And this is why you come. This is why we are here to receive that same testimony of God by spirit and water and blood, that you may believe that he is the Son of God and have that testimony now in you. The testimony that God gave us eternal life and this life is in his Son. Got Jesus? He still comes. 
Jesus still comes and he stands in the midst of his people to speak his word of peace and to fill you then with his spirit and to know him then by his wounds that you, having not yet seen with your eyes, may yet confess with your mouths in saving faith, my Lord and my God. He is here. Standing in our midst, he sees right into your heart and your mind. He knows your sins, every one of them, and he comes. Nothing is hidden from his eyes, even those sins you don't want to acknowledge. And so he's here to deal with them, your sins. By his wounds, you were healed. His body given and his blood shed is for you. That you may eat and drink of them to eternal life and healing. Through the preaching of his word, the baptizing, the teaching, the communing, the spirit, the water, and the blood all tied together, testifying to this fact and crying out to you, peace be with you. Because this is where we encounter the living Christ. This is why we take our sins seriously. Because Jesus does. And he comes here for that purpose. To take them away. And then to bless and to strengthen our faith in that very thing. To know that these words are true. It is finished. And in his word is that knowledge of salvation. Why we are what we are and why we do what we do. And what life really is and can be and will be again one day. This is our life's research. This is our life's study. This is our life's passion. His word, which reveals to us the very treatment and the medicine and the cure for the spiritual cancer that infects us. And it is Jesus. And it is they, these means of spirit and water and blood, that bear witness about him, so that we also may come to him and have that same life in us. The Lord has spoken. And he has promised. Open your mouths wide and I will fill it. And indeed he does. Therefore we come to him who saves his people from their sins. And so now, peace be with you. For he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Praise, honor, and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, King of glory. Because by suffering and death and the shedding of your blood, you redeemed us from the kingdom of darkness and made us partakers of your victory over Satan, sin, and death. Grant us a cheerful faith to sing of your grace with heart and soul and to make known your salvation among all men. To the glory and honor of your most holy name.
Hear us, merciful Father, as we pray for all in need. God of mercy, keep us from the doubts and fears that cripple us and prevent us from knowing the fullness of your saving peace and your gracious presence. Teach us to trust with all our hearts, minds, bodies, and strength in Jesus Christ and him crucified and raised for our life and justification. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our prayer. God of power, give courage and strength to those persecuted for the faith and comfort the families of the martyrs. Keep your church from following the winds of change and make her steadfast in the doctrine of the apostles and the faith once delivered to the saints. Help us to admonish those who have fallen away with your word and to restore with gentleness those who have wandered from the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. God of love, teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Guide us so that in our neighborhoods and communities we may manifest the love of Christ as well as his strength. Deliver us from all that would threaten our homes and families. Protect the police, firefighters, disaster relief workers and medical personnel who attend to us, as well as the places where we live and work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of comfort, give your aid and relief to all who suffer want or need, to the sick in their afflictions, to those troubled in mind, and to those whom death draws near. Especially do we remember the Reichert family and the passing of Heidi's grandmother and Elisa's great-grandmother. And for Cindy, Merlin, Carol, Charlie, Clifford, Ross, Leonard, Kenneth, James, Jim, Roy, Rachel, Bob, Sue, and Carol, and for all who lovingly care for them, heal and sustain them according to your gracious will, and preserve them in faith to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. God of hope, Be with those who grieve the loss of those whom they love, especially those families who are now reeling from the loss of loved ones in the current pandemic in which we find ourselves. Point them to the promise of the resurrection and the gift of everlasting life to all who die in Christ. Deliver us from the distractions of things that do not matter, that we focus on the needful things of your word and sacraments, and so be found faithful when our Lord returns in all his glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless us with the good gifts of the earth, with the fruits of our honest labors, and with a kind and generous heart. Accept the worship of our hearts and voices, along with the offerings, as part of our gratitude and thanksgiving to you. Open our eyes and hearts to the poor, that we may serve them in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our prayer. O blessed God and Lord, hear the prayers of your people and teach us to trust in your will, to answer our prayers with all that is needful and beneficial, both for us and for all for whom we have prayed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, One God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that we who have been raised with him 
may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.